we wanted to talk about Tiddlywinky today, and I sent you an idea, okay? And um, now you're sharing your screen too, which is good, because we were going to walk through the ideas of, um, this is Karen um, Krauss Munson uh, project that you're looking at. And the idea was to click on, uh, scroll down a little bit. No, where is it? Hypertextual theory, I think. Yeah, there it is, that. And open up and chat about a couple of the tiddlers that she tagged, okay? Um, and now we're going to go down to, um, oh, we're going to do one at one each, okay? And um, so you picked, did you pick one out? Well, I was, uh, th there was a very tiny observation I wanted to make, and I wasn't sure um, how interesting this is. But um, uh, when you look at these lists, yes. um, there's quite a lot of entries for text. Mm -hmm. um, there's a fair number of text of entries for hyper, I think about the same number, um, rather less for wiki, mm -hmm. and fewer still for tiddly. And so I wondered if that was kind of what we would expect, because these... Um, concepts are in increasingly concentrated specificity and so there's less material about hypertext than there is about text and there's less material about tiddlywiki than there is about wikis in general um, but um, I, would, uh, I would agree with that and that that did I, I that didn't surprise me yeah um, so the one in some way yeah so 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 looking here, at the, I think that's an interesting observation to start. Why, why does it show both of those? That's just like one of those things, right? Uh, both of which. Like, so when you click on wiki, both wiki tags are activated? Yes. Um, okay. That's like one of those things that we could fix, right? That's something that we could fix. Um, okay. And I really should explain to you how you do fix it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But that, um, well, um, yeah, why don't I just fix it and then that'll... Yeah, it was what I was... Yeah. Um, So what that does is um, shows us the tiddler called dummy, right? Um, uh, no, and it hasn't even fixed it, Han. Um, I Basically, the easiest way to fix it is to transclude that second block of text. So uh, I'm actually working on Karen's original here. So right. let me smoothly switch over. But that's to, fine, yeah. To my own copy, because then I can save yeah. changes. So I'm going to do one of the things I've talked about before that's an archetypal wiki text um, refactoring. Uh, I'm going to copy a bunch of that text. I'm going to create a new tiddler. Uh, and I will call it... Um, which I'll type the, paste the contents back out, uh, and we'll call it hypertext um, wiki tiddly narrative. Okay, and I'm copying that title and now saving that tiddler. And then back here, I create a transclusion of that tiddler. And so now, hopefully, we've got independent, um, independent tag listings and so that part of uh, thank you very much for that demo what that does is shows us the value and the importance of breaking things down into smaller and smaller chunks potentially over time into tiddlers and almost yes. doing it on the fly i think um i think one of the things that's happening here is that um, this is clearly unexpected behavior you wouldn't expect that each time you referred to a tag that the things would be coupled together like that mm -hmm. um, but internally inside tiddly wiki as uh, we've discussed before the tiddler is used pervasively as the model for tiddly wiki's internal structure and operations and so one of the considerations about a tiddler is that they're different and so literally by making it into a transclusion, we've made each of those drop downs happen in a different tiddler, which allows them to be distinguishable. So, in other words, internally, without the user necessarily needing to be aware of it, the identity of a tiddler to, um, uh, with reference to where the drop down should appear, 
is um, made up of um, the, the sort of nested structure of where the tiddler is on the screen. And so by making it into a, into a transclusion, we've um, put it into a separate, a different part of the hierarchy. But anyway, that's yeah, kind of the point. Actually, but that's a, a bit of a theme of these talks, isn't it? Yes, that it is. And talking about something deep and we get into the plumbing. But it know, is, I guess... I so want to bring it out, though. So if, if you would edit this tiddler, because this is actually in the email I sent you this morning, I said, well, could we do this? And this is actually what I was mm -hmm. hoping we could do. So by editing this tiddler um, that you just created the, with the transclusion in it, mm -hmm. your video is lagging behind so i'm not seeing the edit um i pressed done on the edit now you want me to go back into it yeah, right okay. and and see for your little transclude code there that line of code where you mm. transclude that could you just um copy you know repaste that and put it inside of um the uh back ticks so that it will sort of self document what you're doing there <laughs> um yeah Um, okay, and you do three instead of two. That's interesting because that I have been doing two, which makes it red, right? Yeah, if you do two, then you it's the line mode syntax. So you might see that with two, you can do it in the middle of a sentence. So uh -huh. I can do something like that. Right, uh, I do a lot. There's code. Um, but if you want it to be in what's called block mode, where um, the big difference is that the text now extends across the whole width of the available space um okay. so like that so often for laying out for laying out blocks this three back tick format is okay more all right that's definitely weedy <laughs> um, um but in fact well, i think what you've asked me to do has turned out to be quite interesting using using the text of the transclusion as a kind of heading for the content that follows oh, um interesting. and it's one of the things that um has cropped up sometimes that Transclusion by default is invisible. You can't see the joins between a, a transcluded item and the, and the place where it resides. Um, but one of the things that's quite useful while you're working with TiddlyWiki is um, to be able to make the transclusions themselves visible. And there are techniques that you well, we're can not seeing that do that. Already. Oh, yes, we are. Okay. Well, actually, that point that you just raised was exactly what I wanted to discuss. The notion that transcluding is invisible. Um, from a when you write a transclusion, you enclose it in curly braces. But if, if you know that line, if you would write that as a link instead with the standard um, double square brackets, um, and you, maybe you could put that right under your code. Um, yeah, so just do both, right? But the difference here from a reading perspective is that one is an invitation to the reader to click and follow and move. So yeah. when you read a link, it means that you choose where to go and then you go. That's reading a link. Mm -hmm. When you read the transclusion, you don't even know you're reading the transclusion. Yeah. But when you write a transclusion, it's just a difference of curly braces or square brackets. Um, you're, you're suggesting the idea that a transclusion is an invisible link. Yes, from a reading perspective, but they're different actions, right? You write different things. Mm -hmm. Obviously, square brackets versus curly braces is a different. The, but it's sort of like an invisible link, but I don't want to call it a link because I want to reserve the idea of linking as choosing. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's uh, I mean, the, the, the reason why we needed to use transclusion here is interesting. It was because of the plumbing. Um, and I think transcluding the decision where and when to transclude is often an authoring decision that, that is oh, invisible to the user. Um, whereas linking, well, I think I'm repeating what you just said. Linking is the author explicitly constructing a navigational system for the reader to use. Now, on that link, how can you write that link so that it doesn't say hypertext wiki narrative, but says, you know, click here to read more? So you just, so, include, you just include that in there, right? Yeah, we can say yeah. click here to read more and put a that's a vertical bar character that yeah. tiny thing there. and the portion of the click here to read more of the link code does that have a name <laughs> um it would be we'd call it maybe the label of the link okay so the link label yeah how, how can can you transclude a field of a tiddler as a link label or is that that's like doable but not in this short yeah. macro um yes i mean in fact one of the 
Um, can we transclude the a field of a tiddler? Okay, so this syntax that we wrote there for a link is a shorthand, and it's the shorthand for That's this. What, yes. Um, and sorry, a little bit of copying and pasting to get it right, but um, so that's the that's the code to make a link yep. and then the code to make the text we just put the text in the middle of the link so now over on the right we've got two copies of the same thing they're both links that if i click on them they take me to this tiddler hypertext tiddly okay and let's let's edit that hypertext tiddly narrative tiddler and give it a caption And so, sorry for the distraction, but I think that this, what this begins to illustrate is that this fungible line between linking and transcluding. Yeah. And they're different when you're thinking of linking, when you're thinking about reading a link versus writing a link and reading a transclusion versus writing a transclusion. Um, yeah. Yeah, so right in there in your little in your link is you you put the transcluded value of that tiddler there, right? Where it says click here to read more. Yeah. In your second version. So that's when you put the caption of that tiddler. Uh, I put the well I, I didn't. Um no, the caption isn't being used at all, in fact, in any of these contexts. So there is some inconsistency, I'm afraid, Steve, where the caption is used, the caption field is used in some higher level constructs like the table of contents but it's not generally used in low level constructs. But that, in that low, can't you just, can't you just um, transclude the value? Oh, I see. You're asking me to do that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now I can just say, yeah. um, uh, I'm so sorry. So I can yeah. say view tiddler and we specify the same target tiddler, but there are ways that we can make that more efficient and field equals right. caption. Um, Yes, and so that's a lot of code, but it's very yeah. powerful piece of code. Absolutely, people. and then and, um, let's just show people that, that that link's rendered as my narrative tiddler at the moment, and if we change it to a more sensible title, so we'll go, we'll give it the wiki tech, the camel case version mm -hmm. of the same title, or near camel text. So now when I press OK, you'll see that, that that caption, as expected, changed automatically. And so that's a, that's, I wanted to demonstrate that, and thank you for doing that, because it really does get to the differences between... Well, can we take it one step further, yeah. which is, let's say that, imagine that during the process of writing, um, I don't necessarily want to have to make a decision as to whether a link that I'm referring to, whether I want it to be a transclusion or a link, or a tag. So one way of doing it uh, would be to, to define a macro. So I could define a macro and I'll just call it T and it'll take a, a title um, as its parameter. And then I can copy that little chunk into the macro. And now I'm just gonna change it so that the title of the tiddler that it uses Instead of being fixed, we put dollar title. And now. So this is important because this is eighth grade out. That's established. So down here, I can then call T and pass it that same tiddler. Oops, pass it that same tiddler title. Um, and now you can see we've now got two links. So that first link is the one that we made explicitly, and the second one is the one that we made by the macro. And the value of the macro is that now I could swap that out for, for instance, the code to transclude. So to do that, we'd just say transclude tiddler equals title. And close it. And now you can see that where previously yeah, there used to be a link a there. there on Tiddler. Oh. Yep. There we go. Where we used to have a, ha, uh, have a link, now we have a transclusion and we can yes. revert it very quickly like that. So that, that I think nicely shows again something we touched on, the idea that as you write, you create your own vocabulary for expressing these dynamic features. 
And the value of that is that then what you put, include in your text, these custom invocations, you're free to change the meaning of them after the event. And I think that's very powerful. It requires a little bit of discipline and planning um, on the part of the user, but you get some real value in return. And that's basically, we see how that works in TiddlyWiki. You've got the same concept that works in WordPress in any content management system in theory. Although, to be honest, I can't, I don't think you can do it in four lines of code in most other systems. No. This, um, this kind of composability, I think um, computer scientists would refer to this mm -hmm. as. Um, and it's, it's a recognized and important characteristic uh, of, in lots of fields, programming languages, for instance. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's oddly um, pitched at the wrong level in web development or, or a less useful level in web development. Yeah, so, okay. Um, hey, thank you for that demo. That was really helpful because that takes me a while to get to. And I'm just discovering the view command and the power of the view command. Um, I was wondering yeah. if I could, um, I have to check the time. We've got 13 minutes, I reckon. Minutes. Okay, yes. I was wondering if you would do me a favor and um, totally on the fly, I hadn't mentioned this before, but if you go back to my design right wiki and... Um, Is it linked to from here? No, it's not backlinked, right? That's, you know, so it's bit.do slash design right is the fastest place. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. The slash design right. And then under the um, um, new at design right, it's I think it's on week five. I I should have moved it out to the new tab. The week five is the second link, and then hypertext and poetry, hypertext poetry and fiction down under absorbing, consuming, reading, watching, and surfing. Hypertext poetry and fiction. And I want yeah. you to click on um, Hanson writing which is under the, yeah, and then click on the online version. And, I'm, and let's talk about this. So, now this is not written in TiddlyWiki, but you, popping through your mind must be, Oh, this is fascinating. Thank you for throwing it at me. I really yeah. like it. Um, I do. So it, it feels like there's a bit of stretch text going on. Sometimes. Yes. So sometimes I click on something and it's literally getting expanded, but sometimes I click on something, as it seems here, and I'm rotating my through, way through <laughs> very yeah. extremely funny options before it resolves itself. It seems... After, after I've clicked as much as I can, it's going to resolve itself into a text um, uh, in which all the inconsistencies and gray backgrounds have been worked out. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, what fun. What a brilliant, brilliant idea. Uh, yeah. And, of course, fascinating that instead of writing a story about turtles, um, they, uh, the author, Tully, has written about <laughs> the process of writing. Glorious. Absolutely glorious. I'm um, doing this too quickly to read it, which yeah, I'm... Exactly, well, but, yeah, but it's fun. And how, so how, just off the top, I mean, this is a challenge, right? Writing in TiddlyWiki, obviously each bit of text is a tiddler. Yeah. Right, okay, or something like that. And then the tiddlers sometimes have different behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, you could begin to see how you could reverse engineer this into a TiddlyWiki. Yes, I think very easily. Um, I mean, uh, it, I'm just here, I'm just looking at the source, which um, gives you an insight into, oh, I can't, there we go, um, into how they wrote it. So there's basically nested HTML elements that, that express the alternatives. And uh, these classes, I believe in some way, instruct it in its opening and closing activities. Um, and I don't know, one could imagine one could imagine that may not be the most comfortable way to author it. But then I also say from the author's perspective, I quite like the idea in this particular case of writing something and then this sort of process of executing it to produce the output. And 
I think maybe occasionally a sense of surprise at what it outputs is going to result. Um, but pretty, pretty nice, pretty nice. I'd like to, I'll dig in more into how that's done at some point. Yeah, I, came, I, had, I had come across that a while ago and I was just thinking, God, what was that thing? And I found it in my mm. Twitter stream <laughs> and um, really liked it. And I think that, I mean, of course you could do this with text, you could do this with photographs, you could do those any kind of objects. Um, yeah, I mean, what one could replace um, this, going back to what we were working on before, one could replace this macro um, with a thing that did basically the same thing. So yes. they, we'd get a button, um, and when you clicked on the button, the button would then be replaced by the target of the transclusion. Um, and if we consistently use those, use those macros, um, then yes, it would, it would work much the same way. So you'd have like one behavior for A, B, C, D, E, and depending on how you got there, it might pick the behavior and the basically a set of macros. I'm I'm actually just um, freewheeling how to do the stretch text part. Oh, okay. So I think okay. Yes. The, um, the the places where we were stepping through alternatives um, would be similar, but slightly different logic. I mean, because the stretch text is the simple one. Where you're yes. you're replacing a link with um, with its target, so to speak. So stretch text is one of these Ted Nelson concepts that is actually. Um, I'll try mm -hmm. to implement in a macro because I think that's a good challenge. It's not very difficult now that I think about it. So maybe I'll write. No, it's the you 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 need the reveal widget and the button widget. Yes. Uh, basically. Yep. Okay. Well. Cool. Thanks. Um. So well, we had um. Oh, we still have some time. Good. Um, I, I, I'd love to say while we're still looking yes. at Karen's work, yes. um, I was really charmed um, by this. I hadn't seen um, Karen's work before. Let me. Um, so this is my this is my locally saved copy of this. Yes. Yeah, so this is the one that other people can navigate to. Um, and she includes a essay, um, a kind of a, about the experience of the course, uh, um, and it's really it's really lovely, um, uh, nicely written and rather charming. Um, it's also yet another example of somebody using um, the Schneider Wiki technique of using these tag pills in line within the body of the text, um, which is still fascinating to me. It's it's not a conventional reading of hypertext, and yet I love the idea that any decent definition of hypertext should um, encompass this as well as the more conventional uh, um, linking. Um, and um, uh, I wanted to draw everybody's attention to I, what I guess must have been last term's exercise uh, was making a non-linear story for uh, meeting Steve's goats on his farm in upstate New York. So I thought it was worth so throwing what, attention to that too. <laughs> some background on this. Um, this is some last summer's work. Um, and the idea here, if you just come to one of those um, two goats things, was that we might, um, one goat talking in the field, we were experimenting with um, saving pictures that could then be parsed with three goats playing by the tractor. And the parts were the number of goats, the verb, and the object by the tractor. And you're supposed to at some point soon be able to navigate from here to the same picture of one goat playing by the tractor to change it to two goats, three goats, four goats playing by the tractor, or one goat eating by the tractor so that you'd be able to change one of those characteristics and navigate to another picture. There were three dimensions, the number of goats, the verb, and the object. Each one of them have four choices, which if you do the math leads you to a perfect square of 64 objects. And someday I will get to construct the square of those 64 objects that allow for the navigation amongst them. And I'll need a name for what those 64 objects are called. Okay. Um, and there's a spreadsheet, of course, that drives the whole thing somewhere behind here. <laughs> um, That's amazing. And, and someday we're going to, and then if you think about this as an app built in TiddlyWiki, it started, Karen and I started this project as a child, as a kid's book or a kid's app. So the kid is sitting with a tablet and has a picture of three goats eating by the driveway and can choose to change the characteristics of the picture from three to one to two or four and playing to eating, sleeping, dancing, and by the tractor to by the barn in the field, whatever. And so you can do that with any set of 64 pictures and create these three-dimensional navigational flows. 
Um, I called it non-sequential digital narrative, but this week or last week, I think I'm going to change it to multi-sequential digital narrative based on the top, the conversation we had last week or the week before, Jeremy, where I'm becoming convinced that there is nothing called non-sequential. There's always a sequence, there's always a next button and a previous button. Um, and the other thing, if you want to play around, if you, if you go back to the design right, there's a link now to Phil, um, Phil Fitzpatrick's thesis, which we won't go to now, but um, he's beginning to play with the same thing using audio clips. So we, we, we're working on the serial, I don't know if you know the serial podcast. Um, yeah. We talked about that before. There's, there's about 50 hours of audio text available with many different characters, and we want to get to the place where you can navigate within a big block of audio text on the basis of tags. Um, I think it's in the, um, it's actually coming forward. So if you have to go to a week by week guide and look at the non documented, it's right there. It's in the second item under contents. Oh. So, Sorry, they. Yep. I got it. Yep. And then there's week six, which no one has seen yet, but it's there. And um, we're going to scroll down. We're, we're jumping ahead to sequentiality and hypertextuality is one of the topics for next week. It's at the bottom of week six. Um, and that's really interesting. I haven't really rolled this out to everybody, but that's where we're heading. That Graves 2014 sequentiality reading, the second reading takes you to another beautiful hypertext. So go ahead and jump on that. Um, and it's that link right there um, in, in his, he, it's, it's the URL in this. Yeah, there you go. Um, so this is a, the Encyclopedia of Narr the Living Handbook of Narratology, um, which is interesting. And you can highlight a, what the cool thing here is highlight a paragraph like definition. And then scroll down to the, on the right, there should be a link button, how to, con how to cite. And so notice it's giving you a citation to the paragraph, which is quite interesting. Um, ah, that is very good. And so that I thought you'd like. Um, so that's interesting. Anyway, so but so there's a song where we, you know I'm, I'm trying that this discussion of sequentiality narratives. Well, I must say um, I'm I really like the word. It's new to me to, in this context. Um, I, I mean, shortening it to sequence um, helps me a bit because sequentiality is quite a mouthful. Yeah. But I also really like the relationship with the word consequence um, as well. Um, and maybe there are other words that oh, end in very nice. but it's, consequence is a reading word. Sequentiality is a writing word. Hmm. No, I don't know. But so that's the that's that's the kind of thinking I'm trying to to get folks to you know to. It also ties in with um, a an idea that that um, is now routinely um, credited to Bush, which is this idea of trails. Um, yes. And and to me, um, I, I, it is the the specifics of it is it's about a sequence, as in an ordered list of places or things um, of resources. Um, and the so using the and I sometimes talk about in Tiddlywiki slicing things up and then throwing chunks back together to make narratives. Um, but I think the word sequence is is useful there as well that it is about about seeing information. And, we, and indeed, we talk about gene sequencing as if the figuring out of, the, of a sequence is, um, is the task. Yeah, that's very, yes, exactly right. There are patterns or discovering patterns mm -hmm. that are there, yeah. Um, one of the things that you did in Tidley Wiki 5, I believe, maybe it was in classic, but it was, used to be difficult to write sequential lists in Tidley Wiki. Mm -hmm. And I think the list function allows you to build these lists of sequential mm -hmm. tiddlers, right? And, and you can employ them when you need them. Yeah, like, yeah exactly, yes. Yeah. And so it, was, it, it used to be a challenge to have a sequence of tiddlers in a row, like there's no next button in Tiddly Wiki. Yes, but there is this, idea, there is this important idea we touched on once before, that um, in Tiddly Wiki, the tiddlers that carry a particular tag, the tiddlers that we see when we pull down that tag list, that that sequence um, can be determined by the author. Um, and yes. that's how we get things like these tabs. Um, they are, each of those tabs is represented by a tiddler that carries this tag saying, I'm one of these tabs. 
um, and then the sequencing is used to determine the sequence of the tabs. So there is a very, um, it's a key, um, I mean, it's tied up with what we call lists, I think, but it's a, a key, absolutely key feature of TiddlyWiki's sort of internal architecture. So that sequencing comes from lists. How do you get to next? So if you click on week by week, any tag of mine there, any, any click on a tag and you go to the first one, mm. how do you get to the next one? Um, there is a, um, uh, there's a filter called next, um, that's designed to do this. Um, so okay. you, you pass it a list. So for instance, uh, all of those, um, and then, Oh, hang on a second, I'm confusing myself. Oh, that's right. So, so this is um, this is a filter, con this is a tiddler containing a list. And what this is saying is give me the next tiddlers following. So those are the input, and that's the list that we're looking in. And then next gives you the next tiddler in the list. So the next tiddler after Monday in the list days of the week is Tuesday. Um, so you can use that to build a next and previous so you button. you put that as a next button on the bottom of the template? Yeah, I mean, you'll, see, you, you'll have to make it so that you want the input to be the tag. Yes, um, exactly. And so what you're seeing is you're able to transclude, if you transclude the current title of a tiddler and then say go to the next one in the list, it will yeah. use the title to go through it so you don't have to hand, and you put that in a template so that what that's doing is moving us into templating which I think I may have to add as my fourth big word, linking, tagging, transcluding, and templating. Because to me, templating is really a different behavior as a writer than a list, uh, I mean a link, which is when you pick out, you create a list of tiddlers that you want your readers to be able to navigate to, and you give them an order, that's a sort, that's a list, that's a link. Sometimes it's a list of one tiddler, makes no sense, but think about it. And then there's the tagging when you associate a tiddler with a tag. Transcluding is when you choose to bring in certain other values to present to your reader. And templating is when you choose to stuff your stuff, stuff your content through a, I can't call it a filter, but through a template so that it comes out the other side in a specific way. Yes, I, I still think, I think I said this last time. No, we argue over it every week, it's good. It's great, I still think of templating as being an unexpected feature of the way that transcluding works. But templating, to me, when I think about the uh, transcluding at a very mechanistic level, templating is implicit, it's an inherent part of transclusion. But we... Um, it's an unexpected part, which is why we kind of have to pull it out. So it's as if, to me, your five words at the top, maybe some of these words gain additional aspects. So transcluding would get the additional aspect templating. And it's sort of like, in a, so not exactly an alias because they don't mean the same thing, but they stem from the same internal mechanism, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I'm not there yet. Um, that, <laughs> Karen is working with the list from last summer, and what's interesting in my own spiritual journey of hypertext, I, at least I got Hannah to smile. It's not easy. She's not certain about being in this class at all, and she's wondering, what am I doing here? How does this relate to my life? But I got her to smile with spiritual journey, and if you look deeply in my design right, there's the phrase that I wrote the other day that something about your hypertextual cells, expressing your hypertextual cells, which made me laugh, so I left it in there. But my journey has led me to think that filtering, linking, sorting, tag tagging, tagging, and transcluding is to be replaced with linking, tagging, transcluding, and templating. So I've put filtering and sorting under linking, because that's where it happens. Tagging is different, transcluding is different, and next week I'll agree with Jeremy that transcluding is a subfeature of Templating is a soft feature of transcluding, but I'm yeah. not. Well, well I think um, every time we talk about this, what's <laughs> clearer is that um, the, uh, these orthogonal, equally valid ways of looking at things, mine does stem from this kind of um, uh, you know, breakdown of, in, of Tiddlywiki's internal, um, internal architecture. So mine, my speaking here does very much reflect 
how tiddlywicky is built. And that's not necessarily the right vocabulary to, to use, if you see what I mean. The right vocabulary to use is the vocabulary that makes sense for users. So I think that's the tension that we're seeing here is um, the tension between the mental model that the creator has, if I can put it that way, and the mental model that the user has. And it's obvious that they can't be the same thing. They need to be compatible. Um, but they, uh, one is clearly a sort of a subset of the other. And these rules in order to, or not rules, sorry, the techniques that we're trying to draw out need to make sense in both contexts, I think is what we're driving for. Yes, and I think that somehow you and I are sort of meeting in the middle. Let's <laughs> hope, yeah. This conversation might be worth for others, but I learned from them. So, um, so listen, thank you very much.